Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the... No, it's not. Well, it is. It's sort of episode 15. It's episode 15 <laughs> of Let's Grill John. John, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm alright. We it's, haven't uh, done one of these for a while, have we? Yeah, we haven't. I can't even remember the last time we did one. It's been about a month. <laughs> well, we had an... It must be at least a month, yeah. We had, about, we had an enforced holiday, didn't we? Um, mm. with various... You and me and Chris and everybody going on little breaks but we are back and we are raring and it's no longer 40 degrees so i can mm. sit in this room rather than the other room which is at that side of the house that doesn't face south and it's much more comfortable in here and i'm much happier anyway today we're going to be some bits on pawn structures so basic premise here is that Within each pawn structure that I give you, I'd like you to identify squares that would be good for knights and bishops to land on. So let's do the first one. So what do I, you think I mean by this? Squares that are good for knights and bishops to land on. Um, well, I guess generally spaces where you can plonk a minor piece without them being attacked by a pawn. Okay, so what are they called? Uh, what do you call them? Uh, outposts. Right, okay, so outposts are, the, are definitely always going to be good for bishops and knights. Are there any outposts in this position? C6. So, okay, so C6, I'm going to colour ones that are good for both in green, ones that are good for um, just knights in red, and one that are good for just bishops in blue so right c6 is good for both because it's an outpost it's always going to be good for a knight and or a bishop any others that are particularly good for um knights and bishops now when i say that we're really thinking about these three file uh, these three ranks so four to six okay these are the ones that we're thinking about because this is where the holes and the um, potential to jump into the holes are going to be so c6 knight anything h5 knight h5 knight why h5 knight because you can hop into g7 okay no and problem if, and if you're kicked you can hop into g7 yeah or even better uh into the outpost that appears yeah, on yeah there we go Six. good right so we've got knight and bishop we've got a knight on h5 that's good stuff right keep going um, I, I guess a bishop on d4 would work. It, I mean, obviously, we're just thinking about the pawn structures. There are going to be lots of other pieces. We're just thinking of squares that will generally be good within this. I guess structure. a bishop could work on h5 as well. Yeah. Um, I guess it gets kicked quite easily. Yeah, it gets quite kicked quite easily on this square. So, um, not necessarily. That's the thing. That's this is why we're going through it. There's going to be squares that are good for both, like outposts, and squares that are good for just bishops and just knights. So b five is a good spot for a knight as well because you can, if you get pushed by the c pawn, you can hop into d six or even again. What about through a bishop b five? Yeah, that's fine as well, I guess. Yeah, so we've got so again we've got both b five. So yeah, because we, we've got the possibility of landing on um, whoops, landing on d six square. Let's take that back. Uh, we is definitely going to be both. Any other squares for bishops? Um, a a four, I guess. For a bishop as well works okay because it's the only way you can get uh, pushed off by a pawn is by pushing the c pawn first and then you can just take the c pawn yeah absolutely the um the bishop here on the bishop on any of these squares a4 to c6 is going to do a really good job of um looking along that diagonal and also it's not going to be so easy to kick assuming there's no pieces but this is this just more general principles that we can think about within this structure uh, a bishop on e5. Definitely a bishop. Fine. Yeah, why, why not? Might be able to Can get you kicked. not then just 
take it. Yeah, but we're, we're, yeah, we're assuming that there's going to be other pieces here, though, right? And the, and so basically, this is always going to be. I mean, assuming it's defended, it's always going to be good. A bishop yeah. here, um, and knight. Assuming it's defended, will always be good on h5. But a bishop on e5 will get kicked. What about a knight on e5? Yeah, you can then hop into the outpost that appears on g. So yeah, so the knight is going to be very good. It's, it, I think this is about it. So knight, 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 bishop. So we've got plenty here. Um, probably d4 as well is going to be good for a knight, I'd suggest. Um, because if e5 happens, then it's got the existing outpost on c6, and it might even get a new one on f5 as well to hop into. Okay, so we've looked at that. Now let's look at a position that has this structure. So what we're looking for here is a plan based around what we've just talked about because our minor pieces are fine but they're not amazing and the plan here might exist around putting things on putting pieces on the squares we've just discussed to develop white's position so what so think about this normally just like find a plan for white but there there may or may not be extra focus on control of the squares we've just talked about Hmm. And so in terms of in terms of moving pieces, am I mainly moving moving minor pieces rather than pawns? Well you can move pawns if it helps your minor pieces, you can move pawns anyway. It's just thinking about structure, thinking about the opponent structure here and how you might be able to take advantage of it. Also thinking about how black might be able to change their structure and where changes might benefit them. Um, but yeah, also, this is a, it's not going to, I wouldn't have given you this if it wasn't fairly directly linked to what we just looked at. So, what might well, exist here? On the e5 square, you can hop your knight in. The, the knight on f Six is defending h5, which looks like a nice spot, which you could get your uh, knight on f1 to, but for the fact that that knight is um, defending. Okay. So if you hopped your other knight, your f3 knight, into e5, then if it's taken by the knight, then you can take back with the pawn and then put the knight under pressure and move it away from that spot. Okay. opening it. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So knight e5 here. It takes, it takes, and probably knight d7. Okay, so we've got some pressure here. What are we going to have to do next? Bring your, bring the f1 knight to f uh, g3. Well, I've just said that this pawn's under pressure, John. Oh. Uh, defend it somehow. Mm. Uh, you could push your f pawn to support it. Yeah, I think the problem you've got here is that Black's making progress, and you've weakened this guy. This guy hasn't ha hasn't had anything happen to it. I'm not sure we've gained anything from the initial position. Let's just check this position, and then go back to the beginning. I don't think that you've really improved your your pieces. Mm. Um, Basically, what you've done is you swapped this guy for this guy in effect because he's landed on d7 in the first place anyway, um, and doubled your pawns. And given in this position, Black has one, two, three, four versus one, two, three on the queen side, so it's possible they might be able to start doing things over there. Um, so yeah, this this plan just basically gets rid of one of your best pieces. It, and I'm not sure you'd rather have a pawn on e5 than a knight. I think a knight on e5 would be good, but it just gets hoovered off. So, is there some way to potentially make this happen? Well, I guess move your bishop to b5 to put pressure on that knight. 
Okay, so when we, we said that, yeah, we were assuming that um, nothing had happened, but then C6, yeah, I think this is okay because you've now created a little bit of a weakness. Um, C6 is no longer an outpost, um, but which other square is as a result after this move? One. Which square has been weakened by this move? Uh, B. B6 and D6 have both been weakened. So it's possible we could jump, try and get jump a knight in particular into D6. That would be nice. So let's say we just brought it back and then black played a fairly sensible move. How can we, we yeah, so thinking about, I think we, most of your focus was on this square and that's correct. But in the initial position, We've yeah we've established that a pawn here isn't going to be as good as a knight, and it just it's just out it's just in the way really, and it means that white has to weaken their position to defend it. So instead, how else can white bolster their control of e5? Sorry, I lost you there. How can white control? How can white bolster their control of e5? You could put your queen onto c3. Okay, but that's still going to be a pawn ha uh, landing in there, isn't it? If you do it, so what? How else can white really go for? Um... Mm. Remember, we're trying to land a piece in there. Eventually, you could sacrifice your bishop on g six. Okay, let's let's think about what we've got at the moment. We've got a knight that can zoom in there, but then I mean, what's White's worst piece on the board, probably? Let's think about that. We really want to talk to our pieces. The knight on F1. Well, the knight on F1 has a clear path to doing something. Which piece is really just very... The rook on E1. Yeah, the rook on E1 is very sick. It's It's been put... So you could push your, push your E pawn and then... And that would might start to open up yeah. the rook to this. But we can't do it at the moment because black's got plenty of pieces looking. So how can we help ourselves? Try and remove one of them, or uh, add another piece into. Yeah, the... add some scope. So how can we add some scope to e4? Could move your knight on f3 and push your pawn, your f pawn. That takes two moves. Can we do it in one? Uh, Remember the, the whole point at the end of the line the is the e5. The whole point is that we, at the end of the line we have this knight to e5 anyway. Uh, if you play the queen... Move your, you can move your knight to f, uh, g3. Yeah, so knight g3, preparing e4, I think is the way to go here. And the only good way that black has to stop e4 is to play c5. Which means that we can do what? What's the only good way... I mean, what what can White now do? Now that Black's played c5, swap off on c5. No, think about the pawn structure, John. It's all about the pawn structure. Oh, you can drop your bishop into b. Yeah, we take advantage of the outpost. We, we just just basically the whole thing of what we did here of establishing the the weak the possible weaknesses. It's not that these are definitely going to be weak. It's getting an appreciation from what is currently going on, but obviously pawn structures are very fluid and they can change. And so when the pawn comes here, it really weakens the b5 square. And this is a lovely outpost for a bishop to sit on. I'm not saying that white is definitely doing very well here. It's just that white is good. If you you know if white doesn't play bishop b5 here, they're just going to get thumped because this guy's going to come and gain some space, all of this stuff. Mm. So it's just about respond in the middle game is about responding to changes in the pawn structure and you can 
force changes in the form structure as well by taking advantage of what it's already like. So the idea here is that, yeah, we probably force c5 because I don't think I don't see other any other way for black to really kind of threaten anything. Um, e4 is happening if they don't do something else. If they did something like rook e8, then yeah, I think we can play c4 or maybe even e4 immediately. And we're starting to take advantage. And this pawn is going to disappear. So, okay, let's do another one of these. Oh, that's not the way to go. Let's try this, let's try this again. Okay, let's do... Yeah, let's do this one. Okay. So same drill. Let's think about how we can, um, which squares would be good for knights and bishops. G seven, nice well, for a knight. Four, five, and six. We're thinking. Oh, sorry. Because um, well, the seventh six. rank, can, the seventh rank can never be outpost because pawns can never be on the eighth rank to look at them. So we really think about so yeah, H six. Outpost. F6. Outpost. So that's... G5. 4A. Knight. Definitely. Or... Or bishop. Which one? Uh, I, I mean, if you had a knight in there, you can just attack... Well, I guess if you push the H7 it's all, it's, point, you're not going to come in. But. Yeah, it's all about... When we think about this, we it's all about... The, the, we're sort of just focusing on the pawns alone. So if a if a knight came to g5 and the pawn came up, then there's nowhere else for it really to go because these squares are. I mean, we're really thinking about the holes. So h6 and f6 are the outposts. Any other outposts? Not that I can see. No. Fourth, fifth, and sixth ranks. Oh yeah, you can you can be in the D file. D four. Yeah, this is a lovely one. Knight and a bishop won't be able to be attacked down this way. Good. Okay, so those are the three outposts and any other squares for because the pawns are quite quite a lot of potential. So I think there's probably nowhere else really for a bishop. Um, maybe e five. Maybe maybe. What about knights? Any other good squares for knights? Ones where you can sit, do something, but then jump into somewhere else if you get attacked. I mean, there's quite a lot of squares mm -hmm. in the third, in the fourth, fifth, and sixth rank. But any ones in sit. particular? Where if you get kicked, you then have an opportunity. Well, B, B5 with the knight, you could hop in behind the D pawn. Yeah, maybe. I think we've got a slightly better. I really like the look of c5 for a knight because it does something, it looks at the pawn and if the pawn comes forward we can jump into a new outpost that's been created. Okay, so with this in mind, let's do... I think the issue is Lee Chess is being very slow today, unless it's my internet. It might be my internet. Anyway. Right, same thing. White to play. Think about what. Think about how we can make our minor pieces a bit better. Um. Well, initially, the look of knight to a four, attacking the queen, and then opening up the c five space, which is defended by the rook, mm -hmm. seems nice. Okay. All right, we'll come back to that. Anything else? The E5 space looks doable as well, given that the knight is blocking the pawn from moving. But obviously moving that knight will bring the bishop into play. Okay. 
Let's yeah. have a look at this. So the knight a4. Yeah, perfect. Big juicy square that we've identified as being quite good because it looks at a pawn on b7, but also if the pawn moves up, then we can possibly jump in here. And also in this position, you might actually want to take the bishop. So yeah, we do this with tempo. If the queen comes to somewhere like d6, knight c5, and yeah, we're in good shape here. If they kick us, we can happily hop in. And we've got potential for uh, stuff happening on the C file. Lovely stuff. Right, okay, this time I'm going to give you a position that's already formed. And then you can, so the, the challenge here is going to be to sort of isolate the, um, the pawn structure in an existing position. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. You're cutting out a little bit, sorry. Yeah, I know. Let's plow one. Just do this one. Right, okay. So we've got an existing pawn structure for black. Try and identify where you might wish to put, put pieces. Um, the D file is looking potential. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously an outpost on A6. So, outpost? I guess on C6 technically as well. Let we, yeah, let's go for sort of ones that are more um i mean c6 is yeah D, I mean, all of these are um a6 is better because it's a, like in a little hole so it's harder to attack and also mm. we want ones that protect it as well so is there a protected outpost what do you mean by protected as outpost? in you have pieces looking at it already which means it's easier for you to jump something in there yeah i mean that the, the queen is protecting that yes yeah, so that's one is there another one yeah um D5. Good, right, okay. So A6 and D5 are lovely squares for any piece. Um, but this this guy's not feeling so good at the moment because the all of the squares that this knight wants to go to in this direction, sort of in the your more traditional kind of um, ways. I mean, and it, it certainly can't get to A6 or D5 very quickly. It's going to take four moves to get to D5. But maybe we can actually think about that. If you land a knight on d5, that's going to be very good because if takes, takes, then you've got a pass pawn. So I'd like you to find a plan actually to get a knight into d5. Nothing else is really happening. Got in the position at time. Yeah, absolutely. So you've got, you've only got nothing else is really happening in the position. So you've probably got time to do this. So how can you possibly think g4, about it? f5, e3. Okay, D4 D4 is covered. So can we go a slightly different way? Um, When you say D4 is covered, well, you can't jump it in here because it will get taken. You said D4, F5, E3, D5. 5, E3. Huh? Okay, so H4, yep. Then F5. Right, okay. Now, why can't black play G6 to stop you? Uh, because then the pawn is pinned. Sorry. Yeah, so you can just have it. So yeah, this is this is it. This is the way to do. It. So we've got a position here where this knight's just not very happy, and we we can redeploy. We've got time to redeploy it to a lovely square, and we can do this quite happily. It's going to come into f. So let's say black just plays a move like here. Queen moves out of the way, and then we've got some tactics here, which means that we can um, 
actually play knight e3 immediately. Why can't this pawn be taken by the knight? Bishop? To... Sorry? Bishop to where? C2. Yeah, we've got an F5 happens, and I think he blocks it. So is that slightly better here? Um, if you move the knight out of the way... Yeah, we've got you... a better move for the bishop. Oh, you can attack the queen and then... Yeah, you've got a fork. Nice little fork. Okay, so, and if the queen takes, then we do have this pin, yeah. So yeah, we've just got a nice way here of mm. of redeploying a piece to a better square to d5, and yeah, there, there's some there are some tactical reasons why we've got the time to play four moves in a row, but one of them is just simply we gain a tempo against the queen in the first place, and then yeah, from this 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 whole thing is just about yeah, thinking about um, this one in particular is good yeah. You zoned in straight away after we talked about it on the c5 square. Um, and yeah, gaining tempo to try and get your pieces into these slightly better squares will improve your chess. Okay, right. It is now rainy again outside. I was going to go out for a walk. I'm, you can walk in the rain, Phil. I'm about, what, 150 miles away from you, so you'll probably get it at some point this afternoon. Where are you at the moment? I'm in Buckinghamshire. Yeah. Near the palace. <laughs> bit, bit far away from the palace. But there we go. Okay. All right. Thanks, John. And I um, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Put this on our YouTube channel along with all the other Let's Grill Johns. Listen to episode 29. It's that way. Um it's a nice little interview and feature with Tom Lawrence, who is the CTO of Statsbomb. You can find us on all good and bad podcast platforms. Right. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers, John. <laughs>